Hey guys, welcome back to On The Spot STEM, <clears throat> and today we are going to be talking about the tabular method for integration by parts, and this will be the first video in man of many in our Calc BC or Calc AB review videos. So what exactly is the tabular method? It is a faster way than typical integration by parts taught in school in Calc BC or Calc AB classes. It best works under the condition that repeatedly taking the derivative of one of the terms eventually results in zero. Many schools, many classes, I know the Calc BC in our school teaches this concept called the lucky seven, but this concept is much faster when it is applicable. And you can easily solve integration by parts problems within a minute. Here's a demo of how it works. Let's say the problem statement reads, evaluate the integral of x squared times sine x dx. What I meant earlier by the condition of repeatedly taking a derivative to zero is that when I look at x squared, if I take the derivative of x squared a couple of times, I'm going to eventually end up with zero. However, I can do this with sine x, but all that matters is that I can do it with one of the two terms, and I can do it with x squared, and so I can use the tabular method to this problem very fast. And in this tabular method, you need to maintain three columns. The first column is a sine column, and it moderate and it, <clears throat> it alternates between plus or minus signs. The second column is what we're going to call the derivative or the f prime column, and that's where I'm going to take my derivative repeatedly all the way until zero. Now the second column, I call it capital G of x, which I meant for it to stand for the antiderivative of the second function. So think of f of x as, in this case, x squared, and g of x as sine of x. We're going to repeatedly take the derivative of the x squared function, which is the f prime in this case, and we're going to repeatedly take the integral of sine of x, which is g of x in this case. So with that, here's the first step. I always, always, always want to start off with the plus sign when I do integration by parts with tabular method. The first sign will always be plus. And the important thing here is to note that the sign will always alternate plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, but it will always start with the plus. Now the second column would read like this. Since the first sign was positive, the second sign will be negative. And the derivative of x squared is 2x, so the next term in the f prime x column will be 2x. And then the integral of sine of x is negative cosine of x. So in this case over here, uh, the g of x column will read negative cosine x in the second line. And as you can imagine, we'll repeat this process again. Sine of x this time is positive since the sine changes. Derivative of 2x is 2, and the integral of negative cosine of x is negative sine of x. And I have to do this process one more time. And you keep doing this process until the f prime column reads 0. So that's a good rule of thumb. So the sign change obviously varies, and it's obviously the opposite, so it's minus. F prime goes to 0 because derivative of 2 is 0, and the integral of negative sine of x is cosine of x. So we have all the information we need to complete this problem, and we're pretty much done. But how do we interpret the solution from this table? Well, here's how we do it. I'm going to construct arrows in this following way. And basically what this arrows mean is I'm going to take the positive sign, <clears throat> the x squared term, and the negative cosine of x term. It's very important that you memorize the shape because this shape is how you get your final answer. So I basically combine these terms, a positive sign, an x squared, and a negative cosine of x. Think of these arrows as multiplication. So, and just say the sign is plus one or minus one. So plus one times x squared times minus cosine of x will give me negative x squared cosine of x. Minus, and then for the second line, minus one times two x times minus sine x is going to give me positive two x sine x. And the third line, which you can think of as positive one times two times cosine of x gives me two times cosine of x. So that's all the answer is. The answer to this problem is negative x squared cosine of x plus two x sine x plus two cosine x and never forget the plus c's, very common mistake, but there's a plus c. So this is pretty much how this method works. We'll go over one more problem to see how it's applied. Uh, I would recommend here at this point that you pause the video and try to solve this by yourself before continuing. But here's how you would do it. Notice that if I tried taking the derivative of e to the power of x many, many times, it's always going to be e to the power of x, which means I want to try this with x cubed. And I see that x cubed will eventually hit zero if I take the derivative many, many times. Hence, we can come up with the first line, which is just the positive sign, because you always start off with the plus, then x cubed for f of x, the f prime, which we'll repeatedly take, and then e to the power of x for the g column. Now I, start, I go to work. Sign alternate, 
the derivative of f prime of x is 3x squared. Uh, sorry, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, but the integral of g of x is e to the power of x. So always remember that the derivative integral of both e to the power of x is simply just e to the power of x. So we can pretty much fill in the g column for this entire problem without actually having to like think about it because we know it's always going to be e to the power of x. Next line, the sign changes to plus, and then the derivative of 3x squared is 6x, and then we have e to the power of x. And then the sign changes again. We have 6 is the derivative of 6x, and then e to the power of x is still the integral. And the final step occurs when f prime of x is finally 0, and the sign, chain, the sign will be positive, and the integral function will be e to the power of x. And at this point, we just add all the arrows we need. The arrows, remember, go to in this shape. They start off with sine f prime of x, and they go to the next. They skip the uh, the first g of x column, uh, the row, and they go straight to the second one. So from here, I see the answer is simply just positive x cubed times e to the power of x minus 3x squared times e to the power of x plus 6x times e to the power of x minus 6e times e to the power of x plus c. So that's pretty much how the tabular method works. Um, that's this video. I recommend you subscribe to On The Spot STEM. Please like the video. We will be having more prep for AP series coming up as AP contest as the AP uh, season is coming up soon. And we will be having more calcul calculus videos and other videos as well. If you have any particular topics in calculus or any other topics you'd like to see, please leave a comment below. Let us know what you would like. And we'll definitely try to make a video on it as soon as possible. Thank you.